Hi everyone, it's Maya from wholesomeyum.com and today I'm showing you how to make almond flour pie crust. This is my go-to recipe for pretty much any low carb pie I make, sweet or savory. I'll show you how to make it both ways. And it's super versatile. It's buttery, the texture is a little bit like shortbread and it's so easy to make. You need just five simple ingredients to make this keto pie crust with almond flour. And because there's so few things in there, the quality of those ingredients is so important. I always start with wholesome yum almond flour because it has this really fine consistency. It's blanched, it has the right moisture level for all my baked goods. If you use a different almond flour or even worse, an almond meal, the texture might come out gritty or coarse. Nobody wants that. So pick up a bag of this. It's available on my website or on Amazon and I'll link both down below for you. I have several other keto holiday recipes on my channel and more coming up. So be sure you subscribe so that you can see those. And if you need ideas for a low carb pie filling, I have just the thing. I have a keto pie guide, super easy. This is free as a bonus for anyone that pre-orders my upcoming Easy Keto Carboholics Cookbook. If you haven't heard of the book before, it's gonna be filled with all the carbs you miss on a keto lifestyle, bread, pasta, potatoes, rice, even desserts, of course. And I'll link down below where you can get the book and register to get your free keto pie guide. But right now, we're making an almond flour pie crust. Let's do this. If you've seen my keto pecan pie video, you know this is my favorite way to line a pie pan. In fact, I used the exact same crust in that recipe. I'll link it down below in case you want it. But here's how we line the pan. We're going to fold the piece of parchment paper into fourths, and then you can just kind of align the corner in the middle and then cut around the edge just like this. And it's going to form a perfect circle. It's so easy to do and it works for any size pan. So this way your parchment paper will fit just perfectly. Now, sometimes here's what happens. You cut it, you thought it was good, and it's a little too big, it kind of goes up the edges. Oops, that's okay. All you have to do is just fold it again, and then you can just cut around the edge again a little more until it fits perfectly. Now, the parchment paper is great to prevent sticking on the bottom, but on the sides, we need to grease with a little bit of butter. This is going to ensure that the sides of the almond flour pie crust are not going to stick. If you like, you can also use a cooking spray. Basically, any neutral fat is fine, such as coconut oil. Use whatever you like. Now we're going to set that aside and we're going to make our almond flour pie crust dough. This is so easy, just five ingredients. We're going to add two and a half cups of wholesome yum blanched almond flour and a quarter cup of Bestie monk fruit allulose blend. This one tastes just like sugar and creates the best texture. I've talked about this before. And we're also adding a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. Now, if you're making a savory crust for a quiche or something like that, you can omit the sweetener and increase the sea salt to half a teaspoon as well. But once you've added all those dry ingredients, go ahead and whisk them all together. I prefer to use a whisk instead of a spatula because it gets rid of all the lumps. There's no sifting involved. It's super easy. Now, I often get questions on my almond flour recipes on whether you can substitute coconut flour or a different flour. The answer is no, unfortunately not really. If you want a coconut flour pie crust, I'll link my recipe for that down below, but it's really quite different. They don't replace each other one-to-one -one because they absorb moisture so differently. For a nut-free option, you could use sunflower seed meal here instead of the almond flour. Just keep in mind that the flavor and texture will be different that shortbread crust is really only achievable with almond flour. Now I'm going to add a quarter cup of melted butter. I prefer the flavor of butter in my almond flour pie crust. It makes it taste a little bit like shortbread, but if you like, you can also use coconut oil or ghee, any fat that's solid at room temperature, don't use a liquid oil here. And I whisked half a teaspoon of vanilla extract in there as well. It's just easier to mix in the butter instead of after adding it to the dry ingredients. But once you've whisked that together and added it to the dry ingredients, go ahead and mix it just a little bit. It doesn't need a fully mix here. It's gonna be really dry and we're gonna make a well in the center for the egg. Now go ahead and crack the egg directly into that well. This is my favorite trick. You don't have to dirty up an extra bowl just to whisk an egg. So you can just kind of stir it a little bit in the center. And then once you see that the yolk and the white have mixed, 
Then you can go ahead and mix it with the rest of the dry ingredients. The mixture will seem really dry at first, this is totally normal, and then it'll start to get kind of crumbly, but just keep mixing until it's nice and uniform, and sometimes it helps to use your hands to kind of get in there and get it all completely mixed. My keto pie crust dough is ready, so what I'm gonna do is form a ball just like this, it's just gonna make it easier to transfer it to my pie pan. At this point, the crust is really not that sticky anymore, so you should be able to just use your hands, but if your kitchen is warm and you find that it sticks, you can oil your hands a little bit and that will help a ton. So once you're ready, instead of just placing the ball directly into the pan, I like to form a disc first, just like this. It doesn't matter if it's super uniform, but just kind of do the best you can. This is gonna make it easier to spread. Then just place it into the bottom and use your fingers to spread it out. There's parchment paper on the bottom, as you remember, so it does tend to shift around a little bit, but do the best you can. Eventually you can kind of get it up the edges and then you can go ahead and smooth the edges. If you want to flute your crust, you'll do that last, so just worry about getting it all uniform thickness first. And also watch for excess crust between the bottom and the sides. That's where it tends to get super thick, so make sure you press right into that crease down on the bottom. Now I'm ready to flute the crust. Feel free to skip the step if you like, but I just think it looks so pretty. So what I'm gonna do is use two fingers to kind of pinch the inside of the dough and then use one finger to push inward, just like this. A little hard to explain, but I think you can see on the video how I'm doing this. And I'm just gonna go all the way around until it's all fluted. Last step, we're going to poke the bottom with a fork. This is going to prevent bubbling during baking. Finally, bake the crust for about 10 minutes at 350 degrees. Even if your pie is going to need to be baked later, you do want to pre-bake the crust first because this will prevent it from getting soggy and you can always cover the edges with foil or a pie shield later if you need to. That's it. This almond flour pie crust is ready to be filled with your favorite pie filling. I'll leave some ideas for you down below. I have recipes for keto pumpkin pie, pecan pie, even an apple pie with a low carb filling. So many possibilities. Tell me your favorite kind of pie below. If I have a recipe for it, I'll leave you a link. And if not, I'll be sure to make one. I hope you'll make this keto pie crust soon. Snap a photo, post it with hashtag wholesome yum so that I can see what you filled it with. See you next time on Wholesome Yum where I share easy, healthy, and keto recipes all with 10 ingredients or less.